Welcome to Weather School for Kids. I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer, and our topic today lends itself to a few experiments, and also we're going to make a barometer. So what is our topic? Let's take a look. It is air pressure. We know that our Earth is surrounded by air. We live in it, we breathe it every day, but we can't see it. Even though it's invisible, it takes up space, and it's made of molecules. There is more space between the air molecules in this room than in the air molecules inside this balloon. That's right. Now, when we've got high pressure, that means that all these air molecules are densely packed together. When we have low pressure, that means they're less densely packed together. There's more room. So let's think of it this way. If we've got high pressure, it's like being in a crowded room and you're bumping up against people and sometimes it's a hard bump. Well, that's what happens with high pressure. But when it's low pressure, that's when we have more room, more room to dance around. You might lightly touch the next air molecule next to you, but there's much more room. Let's take a look at this balloon. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do this. If you let go of the balloon that you've blown up but not tied, the air rapidly exits. The air is moving out of the balloon into an area of lower pressure. The greater the difference in pressure, the faster the air will move. You want to see how fast this goes? Woo! That was pretty fast. So the air inside that balloon, that's high pressure. It's densely packed and it rapidly escapes out into the open air where there is lower pressure. Okay, here's another experiment. Get a plastic bottle, like a water bottle, and then make yourself a very small paper wad like that one. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the paper wad on the mouth of the bottle and we're gonna blow. What do you think's going to happen? Well, let's try it out. So here we go, we've got our water bottle. We put the paper right in the mouth. Is that what you thought would happen? Let me pick it up and try one more time. Here we go. Paper wad in the mouth of the bottle, just like that. Blow. It popped back out again. Would you think it would go inside the bottle? That's what we would sort of typically think. However, this bottle is already full of air. It's already high pressure in the bottle. So when you try to blow the paper wad into the bottle, you're pushing air into the bottle. So air has got to come back out and with it comes that paper wad. Here's another way to think about it. The air blown into the bottle is a lot like air blown into the balloon. If it's not trapped, it will rush out of the bottle towards lower pressure. So the paper's pushed out of the bottle instead of into it. From this easy experiment, we learn that in the atmosphere, air moves from areas of high pressure towards areas of low pressure. But it's a little different than you would think because you also have to put in the equation, the Earth spins around and that gives us a little bit of a curve. Winds don't travel directly from high pressure to low pressure. Since the Earth is always spinning, winds will travel in a curved path like you see here. This is called the Coriolis effect and it causes air to move counterclockwise around low pressure and clockwise around high pressure. That's in the Northern Hemisphere. I am so excited about this next experiment. I think you're gonna love it, but we're going to have to take it outside because it can be a little bit messy. Now here is what you need to do this one. A plastic bottle and then a plastic bottle with a hole in the side. It's best that you use a thicker plastic for this. Two balloons and one cup of water. Here we go. Okay, the first thing you need to do is take your bottle that does not have a hole in it, put the balloon over it like this, and let's try to inflate that balloon. Okay, I'm blowing really hard and nothing much is happening here. So that's evidence to me that there is no more room in this bottle. We've got plenty of high pressure here no more room to inflate the balloon. 
How about this bottle though? This is the one where we have cut a hole and we put some tape over it just to make it easy to find it. Once again, I put the balloon over the top. Now let's see what happens. First off, put your finger over the hole. Same thing, nothing really happens. Now take your finger away from the hole. It works. And then I put my finger back over that hole and notice the air is still inside the balloon. When the bottle with the hole is used, inflating the balloon is nearly effortless. The air inside the bottle is able to escape, freeing up space for the balloon to now inflate. Now, if you plug the hole on the outside of the bottle, the balloon will remain inflated. Now, there's another really cool part to this. You can actually take the hole and try to inhale some of the air, suck some of the air out of the bottle and see what happens. I haven't had much success doing this, but my assistant has, let me show you. You can either take a really deep breath or just some little quick burst of breath. And check it out. How does this happen? What keeps this air in place? This is the consequence of the air pressure being lowered inside the bottle when the hole is plugged. The high pressure air inside the balloon is pulled toward the low pressure area inside the bottle. Now for the really fun and slightly messy part of this experiment, fill up that balloon with water. Keep going, keep pouring, and make sure your hole is still plugged up. There we go. Now, take your finger off the hole and watch this. That's so awesome. Let's see that one more time. When you add water inside the balloon, then unplug the bottle, that will release low pressure's hold on the higher pressure air inside the bottle and allow outside air to enter the bottle once again. Not only will the balloon collapse, the water inside of it will be propelled by the force of the air. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about air pressure, how do we measure if it's high or low air pressure? Well, with a barometer, and that's what a barometer looks like, but we're going to make a barometer, and here's what you'll need for your do-it-yourself barometer. A balloon, an index card, a bottle or a jar, a plastic stick or maybe a straw, a rubber band, a pen or a pencil, scissors and some tape. So hopefully you have all of those supplies at home. I'm gonna use the little bottle that you see here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna cut the top off of a balloon because we're gonna use this to put over the top of the bottle. Come on balloon, there it goes. So we'll put that over the top and then the next is we will take a rubber band to secure it. And we can also add a little bit of tape just to be extra secure. So you can go around the edges with this. The next step will be to take our straw, or in my case, I have a little plastic stick, and we want to tape it to the top of the balloon. So we do that just like this. This is pretty easy to make. And then after that, we want to take an index card and make sure your stick is really nice and secure there. We want to take an index card and tape it to the back of the bottle so that we can tell if our barometer is going to go up or down. So let me do that, a little piece of tape here. And after we've done that, we want to put some marks on our card here just so we can have a starting point for our barometer. So you would put a little mark right there. Now that we've made our do-it-yourself barometer, it is time to put it to good use, measuring changes in air pressure. Here's an idea for you. If you have a tall building nearby, get in the elevator, take your barometer with you, and watch how the barometer changes as you go up taller in that building and higher in that building. If you don't have a tall building nearby, then you might get a licensed driver at your house to drive you up the side of a mountain. And the higher you go up the mountain, you'll also see changes in the air pressure.
If you don't have either one of those, then you will have to be patient. Put your barometer down on a table and day after day, watch the changes that you see in the barometer. And they'll be slight unless you have a big storm passing through the area. So why does this work? Well, remember air molecules moving around and bumping into things are responsible for air pressure. The more air molecules bumping into each other, the higher the pressure. The fewer air molecules with a softer bump means lower air pressure. Now, if you go up in that elevator or climb a mountain, the outside air pressure changes. There are fewer air molecules at higher elevations. That means the pressure is lower. If you reduce the outside air pressure, the air pressure in the bottle will change, causing the balloon to bulge up, and that will move our stick down. Increasing the outside air pressure causes the balloon to push in, and that will result in the end of the stick moving up. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning about air pressure. We had some fun experiments. My favorite is making a fountain using air pressure. I hope you do make our barometer and use it to measure the air pressure. And you can send me a picture of it. I would love to see it. Send it to lspencer at wsmv.com. If you have any questions on how to make your barometer or anything we learned about today, or maybe you have a suggestion for a lesson in the future, be sure and email me at lspencer at wsmv.com. I've got many Weather for School videos already made, and you can see all of them on my YouTube page at Lisa Spencer. Have a great day.